Hey guys, it's Shannon, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Instead of talking about what is currently going on in the YouTube stratosphere or making any relevant commentary, I wanted to sit down and research something that has always bothered me. And that is why Onision is entirely obsessed with Shane Dawson and what exactly transpired between them to make him this way. Because along with being a scumbag who preys on young fans of his, traveling across state lines to be with people who are significantly younger than him to the point where there are laws saying that's illegal, he's also the man who has been making videos obsessively bashing Shane Dawson since 2013 to the point where the rewired soul would be jealous. Now, in doing this, I had to go through a lot of Onision's content, like a lot of it, to the point where I am very tired of hearing his voice and I know way, way too much about this for someone who's not really a fan of either creator. However, because I am tackling this topic in late 2019 and their friendship and subsequent falling out leading them to be sworn enemies has been a staple of the internet since about 2009, there is a good chance that a lot of the details and a lot of the video evidence has been lost in time. Take for example the fact that Onision once had a video up on Shane Dawson's channel, a video which really was a kickstarter for his career. Though I can find numerous videos where that video is talked about and one video where I can see a clip from it, I can't actually find proof that it does in fact exist. I can't actually find that video, which is wonderful. It's like not being able to put the final piece of a puzzle together and you're just staring at this Thomas Kincaid puzzle and it's sitting there mocking you, calling you a dumb fucking slut because you're such a more- I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. Because some of the things that have transpired between the two have been lost in time. As it were, there are going to be some parts of this video where I make assertions as to what happened and I'm going to try to call myself out while editing at this point, like just try and notate on the screen when that is happening or just verbally call it out right now as I'm recording. If I don't, if I fall by the wayside because I am a shit editor, I know that. If that doesn't happen, I do want to tell you guys right now, at some points, there will be my opinion thrown in there. Everything I used as a sort of guide for this video will be linked below, including Onision videos. However, I will link them through a site so you don't have to watch them with ads or you aren't paying, like you're not funding him, you know, if you don't want to. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Shane Dawson is one of the biggest creators on the platform and it's actually been that way for quite a long time. Shane Dawson is literally YouTube's oest of G's because not only is he one of the first content creators to be on this website, he's also one of the first people to gain a hefty amount of notoriety. It's actually pretty insane how quickly Shane got popular online because for most people that simply does not happen and back in 2009 it was rare for someone to be able to get a million subscribers and Shane Dawson just happened to be one of them. Now that isn't saying it wasn't hard for him at the time or he didn't work for it. There's a lot of people who I've seen while doing research for this who have said that. But it is just kind of crazy how quickly people found Shane, fell in love with him, and hit subscribe. Because three years after he posted his first video on his channel, Shane Dawson TV, he was celebrating 1 million subscribers. Basically what I'm saying here is that Shane Dawson has always been a big deal on YouTube. He has always been a big name and people have always been attracted to him and the content he makes. And people have always, always, always always been desperate to collaborate with him and use him for fame. The same cannot be said for our dear onion boy Onision. When Greg or James Now started his YouTube career, he was actually doing product reviews, which he would usually do in a fairly comedic manner. He would do reviews on normal things that he would purchase either at Walmart or Amazon, and they were usually packed with skits and random 2000s cringe humor, which involved quite a bit of screaming and overall just being annoying as hell. He would run around, yell, about a fairly normal product, make himself look like an ass, and people would stumble upon it on accident trying to see, you know, what this person thought of their Dyson vacuum, see this sketch, think it's funny, and subscribe. However, according to Greg himself, when he started doing YouTube and started uploading, he realized by doing that he had found what he had always wanted to 
do and dedicated his life from that point onwards to being a YouTuber. He started to post videos every day, working his ass off to write and edit sketches all on his own with little budget and all with very little money coming in from YouTube itself. At the time, Greg was showing a tremendous amount of dedication during his humble YouTube beginnings because he was making videos every day all while working a job that he stated required a lot from him and he saw very little success from it. Now, I am not saying that as a slight or saying that he sucked at the beginning because frankly, I don't fucking know how he was at the beginning. All of his product reviews minus one have been swept off the internet with the only one still up being one for a Darth Vader helmet. So I can't really say if he sucked donkey testicles or not. What I can say is that by his own estimation, he was working incredibly hard and was incredibly driven during that time to make something of himself. He made hundreds of videos within his first year. He was doing all of this in order to make his dream of being a YouTuber work. And so in order to do that, in order to get people to see him and to watch his videos, he started using Shane Dawson, someone who, like I mentioned earlier, was a very successful creator since the beginning of when he started posting to YouTube. He started using Shane Dawson as clickbait. According to Greg, he used Shane Dawson's name and image in the thumbnail for four videos on his channel, all of which had very little to do with Shane at all. However, only one of these videos remains up on his channel and it's called Shane Dawson No. It is literally just a video where Onision screams about his YouTube channel being broken because he got a 404 message. That's it. That's the entire video. He's just screaming about a 404 message. It's terrible and I had to watch this video for this video and frankly, I like it physically made me wince. I don't wince easy, but it made me wince as if he was reaching through the computer and smacking me in the face. It was terrible. But Onision used Shane's name in the title because he also mentions briefly that someone had called him a Shane Dawson knockoff in the comments and compared him to Shane not favorably and Onision wanted to let everyone who has ever said that know that that was an act of racism because that apparently is a thing that he thought. And no, I'm gonna try not to dwell on that any further than I have to. Now something that I didn't touch on earlier was the fact that at the time both Onision and Shane Dawson were essentially creating the same content. They were incredibly similar in terms of content they were making and in fact I am pretty sure that almost everyone at that time was making the same type of content they were because this was the dawn of YouTube and everyone was just kind of making bombastic loud annoying videos that relied on shock humor and barf and farting and all, like all that. Everyone was doing the same damn thing. Shane was making videos that had sex in the title. He was click baiting Britney Spears and Megan Fox. He was making loud videos about Fred and so was everyone else on this godforsaken hell site. He just happened to be doing it more successfully which meant that because Shane was the biggest name doing this shit everyone who also was doing it but was less successful was being labeled as a Shane Dawson clone or ripoff and that was something that Onision got a lot during his early days especially because he click baited Shane so often and would often bring up that he looked like Shane but if you were to mention it he would say that is racist and bigoted and frankly even though it's a joke my personal theory is that there's a lot of feelings behind his word I think it really legitimately bothered him that people didn't think he was a new creative mind and he was caught like I think it bothered him people thought he was copying Shane essentially if you watch any of Onision's early videos where he wasn't doing a skit and he's just talking to the camera seriously he comes across as an incredibly ego driven person he talks about his channel the same way a documentary filmmaker would talk about a movie they've spent the past 10 years making and while I appreciate a person having passion you have to remember he was making three minute long video skits that usually could be summarized in guy in wig makes sex joke guy in wig makes poop joke guy in wig farts guy in wig says racist thing everyone laughs because ew the end his content was extremely extremely juvenile but he talked about it as if he had solved world hunger and he was making content that would save the world and with how seriously he was taking his YouTube career and how little was coming of it at the time it's easy to see that being compared to someone who was doing what he was doing but gaining more from it it bothered him and all he could really do about it was yell in various videos that he isn't copying Shane and everyone who says it should stop because that's racist because that seemed logical to him I guess oh my god so from the get-go of the Onision channel you already had this seed of hatred or I guess envy of Shane Dawson here was the man that Onision had gone on record many times saying is less attractive than he is is less talented than he is is less dedicated than he is here's a man that Greg viewed as 
that's so beneath him in his eyes, doing better than he is. Shane is making video after video, racking up thousands if not millions of views. He's everywhere, he's collabing with some of the biggest channels at the time, like Fred and Smosh, all the while Greg is out there trying his best, putting blood, sweat, and tears into his channel and seeing very little back. It's easy to see why Onision had a contentious relationship or a contentious feeling towards Shane, especially in the early days. Again, this is all stuff that I have gleaned from Greg's videos and just being aware of how Greg is. At the beginning, you have this YouTuber who's copying someone who is way, way, way more successful than they are, pretty much screaming for this YouTuber to give them attention and then being upset when people compare him to them. But that kind of relationship would not last long because after Onision made his fourth video talking about Shane Dawson, when that also featured another creator, Swift Karate Chop, Shane finally did what Onision had always wanted. He acknowledged him. In December of 2009, Shane had to undergo surgery and needed to take a week off YouTube to recover. And he did what a lot of YouTubers do in that situation and opened his channel up for a week of collaborations. He hosted smaller YouTubers on his channel for that week, gave them plenty of exposure, and one of those channels he chose was Onision. Now this was a massive deal. At the time of this collaboration, Shane had already hit 1 million and Onision hadn't even broke 100,000. He had already broken a million subs, which was almost unheard of at the time. So for Shane to ask Onion Boy to be on his channel is absolutely bonkers. It's like if PewDiePie asked a person who had 10 subscribers to be in a video with him. That would lead to so much traffic, so much exposure that that person can then make an entire career out of that alone. Hell, I know what that's like because right when I started YouTube, PewDiePie and Marzia reposted my art and I got a huge boost from that alone. And that was just from their business Instagram. Onision knew that collaborating with Shane was a huge deal. And in the videos where he talks about it, like in his video titled YouTube Success Story Onision, he talks about it with such reverence. He praises Shane, says he loves his comedy and what he does, talks about how it was such a big deal and how it has given him so much. Like I said before, despite the fact that he was clearly a bit upset about constantly being compared to Shane and there was clearly some negative feelings about him comparing himself to Shane, he was also trying to replicate what Shane had done on his channel and was essentially trying to be him but better. In his eyes, he was Shane but better. So to be seen by the person you're emulating, to be told you're good enough to be on their channel and to be shown to their million subscribers, that's amazing. And it was super clear at the time, Greg thought so as well. Unfortunately though, this collaboration is lost at Shane's part of the collaboration is lost to time. Onision's part is still live on his channel and frankly it's pretty cringy but it, it's to be expected. However, Shane's part is no longer up and I was not able to find it. But from that video, Onision was able to hit 100,000 subscribers and at various times says he gained a total of 250,000 subscribers from that collaboration alone. Since he's also gone on to talk about that video being the reason he was finally able Able to make YouTube into a career. And I think, honestly, that's like such a ballsy statement. And honestly, that statement alone fucks me up so bad because like, it just makes me think, oh, if Shane hadn't put Onision on his channel, we could have lived in a world where Greg is just not on YouTube. What a world that would be. That shit's fucking wild. And no, all you Shane Dawson fangirls, I am not blaming Shane for the hellscape that is Onision now. I just think it's kind of funny that Greg continues to say that and this is where we are. Like, like, Jesus Christ, time's a cruel ass bitch. But back into this. Onision and Shane collabed, one for Onision's channel and one for Shane's, and clearly that meant a lot to Onision. He gained 100,000 subscribers and then put out a video called YouTube Success Story Onision. And in that video, he talks at length about his YouTube career, what it means to him, and we can glean a whole heck of a lot from what he says. Like I said before, James talks about his YouTube channel incredibly seriously. Despite all his past archives being lost to time, and no longer on his channel, he apparently made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos and posted daily for months, maybe even years, till he got any sort of attention online. He describes his big break as being him working with other creators and reveres those creators and talks about how long and hard this journey has been for him. And as someone who is currently working on YouTube, working my way through this, trying to make something for myself, I totally get it. I started YouTube again while I was homeless as a way to relieve stress. And if you had told me that I would be where I am after a little, less than two years, I wouldn't have believed you. YouTube is a very cool thing and it's very clear that it's always been incredibly important to Greg and we don't know if the same could be said for Shane. Shane got his success rather quickly on YouTube
too. He was being offered interviews with celebrities. He had Lauren Collins, a star, a star of Degrassi, in one of his skits. He was able to network with MTV News and interview various celebrities like Farrah Abrams. He was making moves both in the mainstream as well as the YouTube arena in a time where that was exceedingly rare. He was massively successful since the beginning and his work really set the stage for everything that came after. And that is not to imply that he didn't work incredibly hard because I personally think he probably did. What I am saying is Shane started seeing more success for his work than Onision was. So when Shane gave Onision his start, it meant a whole lot more to Onision than it did to Shane. After the collaboration, it was pretty plain to see that Onision thought that him and Shane were friends, that they were super duper close friends. And personally, I don't think that was the case at all. In terms of making friends online, you kind of just have to click with that person. And sometimes people just don't. I have talked with plenty of creators who make work that I love, who I have idolized, who I've built up in my head and think, wow, if I could just talk to them, we'd probably be bros for life. And guess what? I've had the opportunity to talk to them at length and we just don't get along. We just don't click. We don't vibe or gel with each other. And that doesn't mean me and that person hate each other now or me and that person really don't get along. It's just we're not friends and we're not on the same level and we don't need to be. And I personally think something like that happened with Greg and Shane. Shane was looking for someone to collab with, someone he could partner with for a video. And Onision had built Shane up in his head to be this cool creator who gave him a bunch of subscribers and would be down to hang out with him at all times. He was so into this idea of being friends with Shane, he didn't realize that they weren't operating on the same wavelength. So he got his expectations way, way, way too freaking high. Which is why when they met at VidCon, Onision self-admittedly followed Shane around like a lost puppy, inserted himself into Shane's friend group, and just essentially hung on to him like a stage five clinger. Which frankly is something I have done when I'm in a new place and I only know one person. According to Greg, Shane turned around at some point during VidCon and tried to assure him that they were friends and for him to calm down and that everything was fine because he saw how nervous he was and that is said to put Onision at ease. Another thing that happened during VidCon was the infamous kiss between Shane Dawson and Greg. Yes, if you were not aware, these two gentlemen once touched lips in a gesture that is called kissing in a game of truth or dare, which is just about the most fucking cliche thing ever, especially since both of these men were at the time closeted about their feelings of attraction to men. It's almost as cliche as how the first girl I ever loved would make out with me in front of guys in order to get them to think she was hot, and I would just do it because I was in love with her. My life is sad as shit. Anyway, these two men kissed at VidCon on a dare, and both of them took it like champs. And what's important about this is that in multiple retellings of this story, the kiss has been described as good by both parties. However, after their falling out, Onision has since changed it to say it was the worst kiss of his life and is responsible for putting him off kissing men and being attracted to men for a period of time. Which is exactly what a terrible person would say in order to personally hurt someone that they've been attracted to, but okay. Onision and Shane kissed on camera in a game of truth or dare. Shane declared that they were in fact friends and that is all that happened at VidCon. And all in all, it was unspectacular and fine. And that was the only time these two people would ever meet and hang out. However, after that, a couple more things would happen. Shane would ask Onision to make an intro and outro for his viewer talkback segment, which was called Shane Dawson's Viewer Orgy, which really only serves to represent how lenient YouTube was back in the day. I mean, nowadays I'm probably going to be demonetized for saying the word orgy, but Shane would put that shit in his tags. So that's festive of him. Onision and Shane worked together on the intro, and because Onision is known for his songs, like the banana song, I'm so military, I'm so gamer, I'm so emo, and every other variation of that title, your unoriginal mind can think of, they decided they were going to make a song together. And this song, oh, let me tell you, it's certified gold. A full stop bop. It's just, ugh. If Onision wasn't notorious for copyright striking people for playing his music or playing any parts of his video, I would play a portion of this song just to show you what I'm talking about because that was sarcastic. It is a terrible song about all the fun things you can do instead of drinking. That's right. It's a comedy song about sobriety written and sung by Shane Dawson and Onision, two people who should not sing anything ever, and it's fucking terrible. And on some level, Shane Dawson must have realized that, because after they wrote, recorded, and hired people to be in the video, and had everything almost entirely set up, Shane decided he wasn't going to move forward with it. My guess is probably he heard it one too many times, and heard the line about bombing an abortion clinic, and just, he, he just needed to get out of there. It was just a little bit too much for him. Shane decided he wasn't going to go through with the video, and 
and this is when the partnership friendship whatever you want to call it whatever they had together started to really waver in every video i have found where onision talks about how terrible shane is which is quite a lot of videos let me tell you he always brings this up and it's always super clear that this one thing this one action of him not wanting to go through with this video really pissed onision off he saw it as a massive sign of disrespect and from that point on he felt uneasy about shane however he was still friends with shane so we have to take that uneasiness with a grain of salt another thing that supposedly happened to make onision hate shane dawson enough to make a whole ass documentary on him being a sexual predator and yes i will get to that is the fact that at one point according to greg shane told him that doing youtube was just a job apparently they were having lunch one day and shane turned to greg and said youtube's just a job and him saying those five words just those five words was enough for greg to feel like shane was no longer a good person or a person he could comfortably idolize because he considered the way he made money to be a job and that's fucking terrible according to greg that's a disgusting thing to say you're a piece of shit if you say it and fuck you to death however you might notice that that's a completely normal thing to say however even after that egregious statement that apparently meant made greg think that shane was a total dick pig in mcgillicuddy they stayed friends which to me personally means that greg is either pulling that story out of his ass to try to paint shane as a bad person when it really didn't matter a lot to him either that story didn't happen and he made it up or that story did happen and onision was okay with him feeling that way and it wasn't this big moral outrage to him and he's only saying that in order to try to get viewers on his side and frame him as the big bad guy who thinks his job is a job which is weird and both versions of what he could be doing with that aren't good aren't good at all even after greg moved out of la they stayed friends and they even stayed friends when greg moved out of la it was only later when greg went to visit shane in la and shane wasn't available to hang out with him when he decided to no longer be shane's friend in every telling of what happened between the two onision says that he would tell shane he was coming to town to visit and he would get there and shane would ghost him onision is essentially nick Akato avocado and shane dawson here is trisha paytas and this is 2019 and i'm tired personally i feel the same way about this as i did the nick Akato avocado situation and that is complete and total indifference like i'm sorry that happened to you but in reality that's not a big deal it really isn't mainly because what you're talking about is it kind of rude and not thoughtful yeah i wouldn't want my best friend doing that but essentially you're saying that because you two made tentative plans that amounted to i would love to see you when you're in the area let me know and we can have dinner that that person not making themselves available not dropping everything to hang out with you that's the reason why the person's a terrible person forever no they were probably just busy especially because at the time shane was putting out a new video every day he was working incredibly hard to do shit and now he had well over a million followers and was still growing he was being bombarded with shit that could have been time sensitive and yeah does it suck that he didn't hang out with you a guy he met once when you were in town yeah that sucks but does that warrant its own video no does that warrant the 30 videos you made of him out of spite not to mention all the ones you've taken down no it doesn't so maybe calm down a little bit also just so we are super duper aware i want to say this once again they had only ever met once they had only ever hung out in person once and that was at vidcon when the kiss happened where onision was following them around all day where shane told him they were friends so he should calm down and that was it they were not best buddies hanging out all the time being sweet ass bros they were just people who knew each other online met the one time and had collabed with each other on occasion they weren't bros for life fighting for justice and purity and this is gonna sound a bit shitty but sometimes that's all there is to it sometimes you want to be friends with a youtuber you like and idolize and you just don't click and they don't actually want to be your friend and they don't want to talk to you as much as you think and you're just kind of stuck in limbo because you know you don't click with each other but you still like them i have been on both ends of this with youtubers i like and me not vibing and me feeling weird or people who like me and us not vibing and us both feeling weird because we want to vibe but we just don't and it sucked but literally that's all there is to it and while Shane let it go and never really spoke about it again Onision didn't and has been constantly and consistently shitting on Shane Dawson since it happened the first video where Onision talks about them no longer being friends or at least the first one I could find in the multiple archives is a video called Shane Dawson roast where he actually is incredibly incredibly cordial 
cordial and normal in the video, which is not something he is known for being when he's actually mad at a person and when he's actually cut someone out of his life. I mean, the moment, the second he broke up with his girlfriend, Adrian, he was making videos about how sex with her was terrible and saying she had a dirty vagina. Like, Greg is not the type of person who is kind and understanding to someone he fundamentally disagrees with. And that leads me to believe in my own tinfoil hat theory that I have no proof for that Shane was actually the one to nix the friendship and this video was Onision trying to get back in his good graces. But that's, again, just my little tinfoil on that. It is also important to note that in this video, he also makes a statement about how Shane is harmless and not a creep because there were some memes about Shane sexually assaulting people and children. It's just weird. There were weird memes. It was a different time. It was terrible. But Onision says in the video, Shane is not a creep and is especially not a creep to children, which is a statement he would later retract and try to backtrack on that to say he knew the entire time that he was in fact a creep. So this video aged perfectly terribly and makes him look like a liar, which is something we already knew here in 2019, but maybe, I don't know, I, I don't know. Time's a fucking fickle bitch. Onision would go on to make more and more videos, each one getting more and more antagonistic with Shane, which felt exactly like what he did at the beginning of his YouTube career. He would put Shane in the title and thumbnails for views, rage against him or rage against him, poke fun at something he did, all with the hope that Shane would talk about him. But Shane was a successful YouTuber at the time, pulling in millions and millions of views without instigating any drama and needing to fuck with Greg, so he would never reciprocate. And all of that continued in earnest until Onision made a video about Shane Dawson's weight gain and how Shane was a bad person because he had social repose on his podcast. And while Shane himself didn't respond to this, a lot of other people did. Despite what you guys might feel about him, social repose did make a really great video on this. I never made a great video about this and my sweetest friend Ready to Glare also made a phenomenal video about this. So I'm not going to dwell on this point too long because more people who are able to speak more eloquently than I am capable of have already done so. But this video came out and it garnered a bunch of backlash because he was essentially saying that Shane had gained weight because he didn't follow his advice that he gave him all those years ago and was mocking how unattractive and gross Shane was now compared to when he knew him. It was also a way to oddly stroke his own ego because he could not throw in the fact that he had not gained any weight in that time and even decided to do push-ups because I don't know somehow that's important. I bring this video up because I want to talk about the massive tonal shift from his first video on Shane after their falling out where Onision said Shane is still a good guy and is attractive and kind and great to this video where Shane is a disgusting person who he could no longer associate with because he's disgusting and gross and anyone who associates with him is gross by default even though in reality him saying that he's making this video to distance himself and not associate with himself with Shane is hilarious because they had not been associated for years at this point. What's also amazing with this video is that when he criticizes Shane's weight he also lets us in on some more lies he told within the past couple years and really brings to light how weird his relationship with Shane was. Shane had Onision had previously said Onision had previously said that he moved to LA to do YouTube and to get more opportunities but in the video and his follow-up defending the video he states that he and Shane talked about it and Shane is one of the main reasons he moved in the first place which is inherently creepy because once again they had only met in real life one. If I knew someone had spoken to them online in a working capacity and had met them once where they followed me around a convention and kissed me on a dare and they decided to say hey hi hello I'm gonna move to be closer to you I personally would feel incredibly awkward about it. In fact I would probably be overwhelmingly on the edge around the person because that's fucking weird. Now let's talk about what happened with Pop Blast. In order to stay monetized, I'm not going to say what those accusations were. I also just generally don't want to say what they were because they were notably fake and not real and a heaping pile of bullshit that only was said because that person who made those claims was trying to take away Shane Dawson's renewed interest in success. Once again, Shane Dawson had rebranded, revitalized himself and become a newfound success and was gaining. And whoever made that video only did it to seep away from him. And that's all we really know for sure. However, quickly after the video went live, people started realizing that the claims were in fact fake and ridiculous. Shane himself made a video defending himself and most people let it go at that because it was clearly bullshit. But there is one person, one singular person who did not let it go. One person who pretended that it was in fact true and real and tried to keep the narrative going. 
and that one person was Onision. Like I said before, Onision had an almost obsession with Shane before they were friends. He had been using his name for views long before anyone knew who Onision was. So anytime he could do that, he would. Even if it was for something that clearly did not happen, where it was only going to garner him hate, he would do it. And once this video came out from Pop Last, Onision took it and ran with it. Now, this part is just my own tinfoil hat theory, and I guess Shane's hat theory as well, because it was mentioned in the Shane Dawson documentary, but they censored his name. But my theory is that Pop Blast was actually Onision. I am sure that Shane has pissed off plenty of people in the past, and there are plenty of people who hate him for very legitimate reasons, but I doubt any of them would take it as far as Onision would. I doubt there is anyone else alive on this planet who would impersonate a social media company just to slander someone who essentially didn't want to be your friend because you came on too strong. But personally, I wouldn't put Onision past that at all. After that video came out, Onision made multiple videos announcing Shane, saying he knew about this all along, and he told his partner that Shane's relationships with young people makes him extremely uncomfortable, that he knew this would happen, but none of those videos had any shred of evidence past some terrible jokes Shane had made in the past. And by the way, jokes do not count as uh, that that's not that that's not the same thing. He also made what he called a documentary, which was really just an hour-long mess where he regurgitates points made by Pop Last and tries to use them to claim that Shane is guilty, even though those claims were debunked less than an hour after they were made. And what's also interesting is that those claims can be debunked by Onision himself in his own past videos. At the time, he was really the only YouTuber, the only person who was trying to argue that Shane was in fact guilty of any of these things. And in my opinion, it's because he's the one who made the channel in order to smear Shane. He's the one who did that. But again, that is my own tinfoil hat theory. All we know for sure is that he kept that narrative going up until February 2019, where he made a Twitter video talking about how he was in fact in the wrong, he was sorry for saying what he said, and that he realizes now he was spreading false information because no one else had come forward. And to me, it's kind of hilarious he didn't know he was doing that since he's the most honest YouTuber around who would never do anything that was out of spite ever. No, 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 no. That's not, that's just, that's simply not him. Or at least that's the lie he tells himself. That happened in February, but since then there have been multiple other videos that Onision has made about Shane, and I'm gonna go over those very, very briefly here. In July, Onision made a video about how everyone was mad at him for not wanting to participate in a YouTube boxing match with a different YouTuber, and he made it clear that he was not a coward for not wanting to do it. He just didn't want to do it. Nothing more, nothing less. But he was not a coward. It is really important to him that you guys know that he is not a coward. He then went on to about how no one said that to Shane Dawson when Onision had challenged him to a YouTube boxing match and that he found that to be really really unfair and mean and that everyone who didn't like him and everyone who didn't like the video was a bot. I'm not kidding, he literally said that. Then a month later, Onision made six videos about Shane Dawson in rapid succession, all about how Shane was actually now the lord and savior of YouTube because he made a video with Eugenia Cooney. He said because Shane had made a video with Eugenia, he was saving people's lives, and he was now a great person. Now, I don't have an issue with anyone being kind to someone else, but this is coming fresh off the heels of him calling Shane a child predator and Eugenia a monster because she's influencing young people. Onision had literally been accusing Shane of vile things for months before, and now he was praising him for saving someone and claiming he was the best thing since sliced bread and making six, six entire videos on it, some of which were actually attacks on other people. That's insane to me. In friggin' sane. But we aren't done yet because that happened three months ago. A month after that, literally two months ago, Onision made a video called Shane Dawson's Cat Song, which, you guessed it, is a song about Shane Dawson having sex with his cat, which I don't, I don't know guys. I don't know how this guy both sits on the highest of horses and gazes down upon us peasants and then makes a song about fucking a cat. I don't, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he can both say he's the, on the moral high ground and also do that, but he does, and I don't really know anymore. <sighs> So that's where we are now. Shane Dawson really has yet to acknowledge Onision as anything other than an annoyance, and frankly, I don't think he really should. Anytime he has in the past, Onision has tried to spin it, and it's really not worth his time. Onision is now out here saying that their beef, 
or what have you is now squashed because he apologized. I made eight videos in the past couple months trying once again to get on Shane Dawson's good side and frankly it's it's a lot to unpack. Personally I think this is just a case of someone being let down by their idol and having that be something that they hold on to way 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 too long. Someone revering someone so much that they don't allow that person to be a human person and make mistakes and disappoint them. Instead you have someone who was so monumentally disappointed with all the human actions that this human person made to the point where they have spent the better part of a decade pissing their tits about this person when they should be living their lives and being worried about Chris Hansen coming from them. Honestly, it's a testament to how bitter and fucking spiteful Onision is despite everything he says and... I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. That's all I have here. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this all the way through. This is my second video, I think, in my new apartment. I hope everything sounds good. I am currently recording in a closet because I think everything else sounds really echoey. But um, thank you guys so much for waiting with me between uploads. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments down below, and I will see you in my next video. Later!